the 12 volume Chilcot report. Now, on the rundown, I started to, to put in all of the, the things that it. That it uh, you ran out of space, uh, didn't you? I, well, I did not only ran out of space, it's like it is the most damning report I've ever seen against a former sitting prime minister. You know, the circumstances in which it was decided that there was a legal basis for UK military action were far from satisfactory. We chose to join the invasion of Iraq before the peaceful options for disarmament had been exhausted. Military action at that time was not a last resort. The judgment about the severity of the threat posed by weapons of mass destruction were presented with a certainty that was not justified. Despite explicit warnings, the consequences of the invasion were underestimated. Planning and preparations for Iraq after Saddam Hussein were wholly inadequate. Mr. Blair wrote to President Bush in July of 2002 saying that we would be with him whatever. Mm, that's the uh, key uh, one, I think. Yeah. Absence of a majority Poorly. of support, we considered the UK was in fact undermining the Security Council authority. Wow. Lord Goldsmith, the Attorney General, said Mr. Blair uh, asked Mr. Blair to confirm that Iraq had committed further material breaches as specified in Resolution 1441. Blair did so the next day. However, the precise basis on which he made that decision is unclear. Lord Goldsmith should have been asked to provide written advice as to how, in the absence of a majority in the Security Council, Mr. Blair could take that decision. Judgments about capabilities and the statements were presented with a certainty that wasn't justified. He'd been warned that military action would increase the threat from Al-Qaeda to UK and UK interests. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. It's clear the policy was the basis of flawed intelligence assessments. Uh, WMD capabilities were not there. Little time to prepare three brigades and the risks were neither properly identified. They talked about the equipment failures. They talked about the scale. Uh, I mean, it was humiliating that the UK reached a position in which an agreement with a militia group had been, which had actively been targeting UK forces was now considered the best option when we were withdrawing. Uh, you know, it's well, just yeah, unbelievable. The thing is, it strikes me as well that, you know, Tony Blair has done the soft left. I count myself in this no favours whatsoever no. I mean for example in, in the reaction to this report as well and whatever you feel about Saddam Hussein and the invasion and um, I, you know I, I supported that and, and I, I think the wrong thing was done the right thing was done for the wrong reasons yeah. getting rid of him is an, he's an evil man you know and all the rest of it but you know these are awful, weren't they? And um, well, you know, the, and, and the that, that thing, deceit. it's the weapon deceit absolutely. and Absolutely, and that thing about you know giving that quote, giving I will su to from Blair to Bush, I will support you, whatever quote. I mean, before I think I'm right in saying before it went through the Commons, before it went through the UN, he didn't even tell his cabinet what was going on. That's, that's just awful. I mean, and, and watching him yesterday yeah. wriggling and you know using all these words because he's a lawyer, of course. Well, he's he's afraid of, of being prosecuted for war crimes. Yeah, and that's the growing call to that, isn't it now? Yeah. 